All right. Welcome back to Project Stories. We're here to talk about so many different things. But right. today, we're going to talk about your parents. Right. My parents are over Ralph Matthews Chapman, uh, <clears throat> the third, and my mom was Esther Berglott Hallberg. And um, they ended up uh, getting married. And when I think about the two of them and their background, it's pretty amazing because one was my mom was the youngest of 16. Uh, <clears throat> her older brothers were probably in their 20s when mm -hmm. she was born. And some of them actually died in their 20s. So the, the, the difference between a farm girl in North Dakota in pretty, probably pretty much of an isolated location because there weren't too many farms around there. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, who was brought up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and his dad had a big uh, ice cream confectionery company in downtown Minneapolis. And they lived more of a, m mom said they always had servants and mm. um, my dad <clears throat> and his two brothers, Gene and John, were, my mother thought, kind of playboys in a way. When <laughs> really? They were, they were brought up, you know, in the 20s. And so, you know, they had this completely different lifestyle. Yeah. I um, Wait, so you're, so Ralph Chapman had two brothers. Right. It was just the three of them. Yeah. I'm imagining them and, in like curt tail or coattails, like going yeah. to balls and stuff, right? I don't know. I don't happen. know. Yeah. It, like it's... Bridgerton? No, different. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what all went on. Um, <clears throat> he died really young. Um, and so I never got to know him uh, very much because he didn't talk much. And the <laughs> entire time that I knew him, he was not feeling well. And we mm. all knew that. We didn't mm. know what was wrong with him. He had terrible coloring. Um, he had, um, he, he had to have been in hospital two or three times when I was younger yeah. and but um it it was uh you know when I think of the two families um and uh what the expectations were for those two families mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's completely different mm. yeah my mom always said oh they were spoiled <laughs> Uh, Stella Veneta was her name, my grandma's name, uh, and she married Ralph Chapman the second. Yeah, no, she married Ralph Chapman the the, the second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, she married Ralph Chapman the second. Yeah, and what was the what's the Chapman name story? Well, the Chapmans. Uh, when I was at, when I was in college, I took an English class, and mm -hmm. I was a sophomore, so I was about nineteen. And <clears throat> so the English teacher was talking about names and how people got their names years ago, and she looked right at me and she said, "Oh, Chapman. Well, Chapman came from people that lived in England. They were they sold chap books." And they were either uh, beggars or they were gypsies. <laughs> My face just kept getting redder and redder. I'm thinking, oh. You're thinking, am I the oh. beggar or the gypsy? <laughs> oh, my. What a background. Uh, well, so I funny. I really connect with that because <laughs> it, because we're, you know, I feel like I'm a, you know, a creator. Right. You know, a, uh. an artist. <laughs> You know, misunderstood, maybe. <laughs> yes, we all are misunderstood. <laughs> but yeah. But um, anyway, it was very embarrassing for me because I, I wasn't on the top of the, of the class, food chain. Anyway, yeah. so I was like, oh my gosh. But anyway, it was. It, it's it's a really great story to talk about where you came from. Yeah. But chapbooks were little handmade books. 
they were small. Sometimes they were poems. Sometimes they were songs that they wrote down. Sometimes mm-hmm. they were just little stories. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, the beggars would go around and uh, see if they could sell some of these. And they were handmade, so they were stitched. Yeah. Uh, so if you ever look up chapbooks, it's, it's really Maybe interesting. Maybe I should sell chapbooks at the Renaissance Fair. And it'll be like full circle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so that was your that was a little bit about your dad, and maybe we'll talk yeah. more about him. But yeah, um, I want to hear more about Esther, yes. your mom. My, and my. we do have a a recount here, and uh, if you're lucky, maybe you get to read this because it was making me laugh out loud. Loud, yes. But it sounds like your mom was a character and yes, had had many did. an adventure for a woman growing up in the early 1900s. Yes, she really did. And um How, it, where did it all start? Uh well, my well, it started with my grandma, of course, who is just really interesting and we'll tell that story probably mm-hmm. next week or so. Mm-hmm. And that story was about how my grandmother got here from Norway. Mm-hmm. Uh but she did marry a man uh, who had 11 children and his wife had died. And we don't know why she got connected with him. I think there were some Gullicksons. Her last name was Gullickson. So I think there were some Gullicksons in the area. Mm-hmm. But there's other stories like, well, she read a, something in the newspaper that said this guy is looking for somebody from Norway to take care of his kids. Because he still had a couple of younger children Mm. so my he married of course if you live with somebody at that time you had to get married to him so he's like 20 some years older than she was Mm -hmm. and she was just 24 and she got married and this is anna caroline though this is anna caroline this is esther's mom but but then she had five children with him wow and so and my mom was to take care of yeah and my mom was the youngest which is kind of important to understand because um, in the realm of things, um, <clears throat> when you're the un- youngest and you have all these brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. it, it's, a, it's a completely different life. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, and I think probably through uh, her background and, and because of Anna Caroline, she probably was very adventuresome. Mm-hmm. And so she... Uh, went to uh, about 16 she always worked on the farm Mm -hmm. and uh, she loved she loved working on the farm she loved working with the animals she and Walter her brother that was next in line to her Mm -hmm. uh, they went to school together and they would jump on a horse named Mm -hmm. Jack (laughs) every morning on the back and he there wasn't any way she just they just jumped on the back of this horse and this horse always took them to the school yeah and it was an elementary school they jumped off and said okay jack go on home and so jack just left and he always made it home mm-hmm. but sometimes it was an hour so they'd run home because they couldn't wait to find out when jack finally got home oh so, my God. so one day it'd be an hour sometimes it would be two hours sometimes it would be three hours and they always thought that is the funniest thing because where did that yeah where did that horse doing? go yeah <laughs> but but you know she tells tales of her when she was alive she told all these tales of what happened to her as a young child growing up on a farm with a mom who is a midwife and was gone all the time. Mm -hmm. And her brothers were older and was supposed to take care of her. (laughs) Yeah, her brothers. Yeah, and I'm sure that was because she. there was only three girls in the whole family of 16. The rest were all boys. Could you believe that? I guess they were probably happy about that. Yes. Wait, I want to back up to Jack. Is Jack the horse story? Yeah, that's the horse story. Tell that was story. Oh, that that's the story. No, no, Jack. no. But what did Jack ever get whipped by someone? Oh, that's my grandmother's story. 
Oh, no, the Anna that was Caroline a, story. Yeah, that was an Anna Caroline story. Okay, and we'll I get to, t- we'll I'll get to that one later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, uh, my mom at 16 decided she wanted to get out of town, and she went down to um, Denver, Colorado, to see her sister, Agnes, uh, who was married and lived in Denver. So she went to get a job. And so the job that she got was a second maid, which meant a second floor maid, which meant that she took care of the upstairs. Mm -hmm. She had to clean and stuff. And for them to pick her from a a roster of a lot of people, I guess, she said. Here's what she wrote in her kind of written history. So Esther wrote, wrote this and. This made me laugh out loud. She, so related to this story, um, I was hired right away. The lady told me she had interviewed 30 girls. I told them I couldn't cook. I remember saying I didn't know how to boil water. I still don't know how I still don't know how I was hired. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. I also relate so deeply with that because I hate cooking. (laughs) Yeah, she, yeah, she, anyway, uh, so this is a family <clears throat> that, and she, they had children, so I think she was part of the babysitting part, too, mm. but they, they went all over because they owned the amusement park in L.A. Yeah. <clears throat> with a big Ferris wheel years ago, and so they would take her with them, and so she would eat with them in these fancy restaurants <clears throat> and um and she really got to like she talk got, about like traveling when that wasn't really a thing no, you know to like no, go around the country and no and experience just, that uh, yeah i'm sure they might have gone by train but but maybe by car <clears throat> yeah. at that time because that was probably in uh the 19 mm, i say 14 15 something like that yeah so, so there then, were cars. So then after she was a, after she was kind of this maid nanny, what did she do next? Well, she um, she was in L.A. with them, and um, she kind of got lonesome for people. She wanted to be people. She, made, she was a teenager. She wanted to be with people her own age. And some girlfriend that she met was a Harvey girl. And a Harvey girl was a, a waitress that was on the um on the railroad and they had put in they had put in these restaurants so that right next to the the railroad mm-hmm. and so people would get out and go in there and eat mm-hmm. and that and then come out and there were several of them she went to the one in north um in um uh what is it oh new mexico it was the one in New Mexico, mm-hmm. and um, she loved it. So yeah. all the girls were upstairs in a yeah. loft sleeping, and all downstairs was a restaurant. Yeah. And so, and the townspeople were really nice because these were all girls that were really sweet and, you know, probably very naive. And so every night that she could, she went, she went, she went, dancing she loved to dance Mm. and um and she was a really good dancer because she had a lot of rhythm uh but at that time men that were going out west were usually just single men and they were just looking for wives right yeah they wanted to settle down with somebody somebody to do all the work (laughs) (laughs) and so i heard she was like had been given like three or four different Proposals. proposals to get married and well here's here's one yeah, more note from one. her from her written history is um the townspeople were so nice to us they took us to the indian reservation where they had a celebration we went dancing a lot i met a man who i liked to dance with we went to all the dances together one night he gave me an ar- an engagement ring i just liked to dance with him i took a train home that night <laughs> I like like how she doesn't even mention, like, he proposed or, like, she, anything about, she just says, 
Nope. No, I didn't. I just like to dance with him, so I I left. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. So give us like. And you know, she was probably by that time in her twenties. In yeah, in her later twenties. Well, no, no, maybe, maybe earlier. Early because, per- yeah, because yeah. then she goes. Uh, where does she meet Ralph Chapman? Well, she met Ralph in at Ralph at that time. That was in probably 1933. Yeah. Uh, So that was later. And she was probably 27, 28. My dad was about uh, eight years older than she was. Mm -hmm. And he had a restaurant. Now, the Chapmans had lost everything. I mean, everything during the Depression. So I don't know how he had that restaurant. But my mother, but she went to work with for him for a period of time. Then she said he didn't get, she never got paid very much. So she quit that job. And then he got some mail for her and looked her up. And my dad found her and said, can I take you out for coffee? And she said, from then on, we were a couple. <laughs> yep. That's what I have too. From then on, we were a couple. I love this too. Uh, they were married on May 10th. Riley, isn't that Riley Jean's birthday? <laughs> Might be my great granddaughter. Yeah, maybe. And in 1933, um, it was four dollars at the justice, uh, the justice of peace. That was a lot of money for us. So they like eloped, or like they just went to the right and paid four dollars. And you know what she writes here too is we were very happy together, even though it was a struggle to live. And I feel like even just that sentence, like maybe sums up. Yeah, a little, little uh, yeah, a little her, bit of her life. Yeah, because she was a very happy person, mm-hmm. um, and was full of energy and and uh, she always seemed to be happy to me. Yeah, uh, but but um, anyway, uh, so well, then that that's kind of how it all started. Yeah, and then she had my brother, <clears throat> and in. In 1934, delivered and my grandma um, delivered me because she went back to North Dakota because my grandmother was a midwife, yeah. and she delivered me. And then my sister was born in 1939, so that yeah. became our family. And we were living in Minneapolis at that time. Yeah. And if you're gonna say like one sentence about your, well, you said your parents, like one sentence about their marriage that you. That from your perspective? Well, my mom, who was brought up on a farm, knew how to do everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, there wasn't anything she couldn't do or take on. My dad, however, brought up as kind of a person that didn't have a lot of responsibilities and didn't learn a lot of, you know, basic things. Mm -hmm. She was the one that was pretty much in charge of everything um yeah. my dad uh lost that job um as in that restaurant and she said he was he did not know how to cook he didn't know how to do anything so it's easy to realize that why the reason is yeah he left but um but you know he he really kind of had a gold mine when he married my mom because yeah. when you think of it, you know, she kept everything going. She was yeah. the one. And, um, but my dad was very smart. And <clears throat> I remember him sitting in chairs and rolling his hair like this because it was all really natural curly. And he'd have what, all these little ringlets in the bottom of his, of his hair mm-hmm. and reading. Yeah. He read, we had a lot of Chapman books. Um, because they, when they had, a, when they closed up everything, uh, he got a lot of the books. So he spent all his time at home when he wasn't working, yeah, uh, reading, and so he's very quiet. Yeah, and uh, well, here's one last question, and then we'll wrap up this video. Okay. What is like one since your mom? It sounds like just had a little bit more of an impact on your life since right. you knew her many, many more years. Right. What is like a lesson? That you learned from your mom? Um, 
Oh, I learned so many lessons from my mom. <clears throat> but I think uh, just to go forward, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, when my dad died, she didn't have enough money to bury him. She had to borrow yeah. money from his his brothers. Um, and I remember that. I mean, she was, they were completely broke. We lived, by the time he died, I would say we had lived in maybe six houses, all, wow. all rentals. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, and trudging through all of that was probably really hard. And I know yeah. there was times when she didn't have enough to eat because mm. um, she was made sure that we had enough food. Um, so she, she was very devoted yeah. Uh, she was a very, you know, I think if you're brought up in a farm in North Dakota where they have so many horrible things happen to, to you, um, you just become very resilient. Yeah. Yeah. So just keep, keep taking steps forward. Sounds like she yep. was always moving forward yeah. no matter what obstacles yeah. yep. were thrown at her. Yeah. And with, in, in a joyful way. Yeah. I feel like that even yeah. is conveyed in her her story here was right. that like it was hard but it was full of adventure and, and joy and fun yeah yeah right yeah um i mean i i can't even think of a time when it was really sad even though we were really poor and didn't have any money um i i just don't remember are we on still mm -hmm. oh <laughs> Uh, I don't remember uh, not having kind of, I didn't, we never felt like we were really poor people because um, I think of my mom. She's just, you know, she just would go on with her life and no matter what happened. Yeah. And so I, I really had, even moving from place to place, um, I'm sure it was a real trial because they had a lot of the Chapman furniture, which was huge. And they tried to take most of it, although through the years she would, when yeah. we'd be renting, she would just have to leave it. It would be too big. Anyway, she, um, she was just really a strong woman mm -hmm. and um, never had an education. She, I think she yeah. went through eighth grade uh and and then probably that one year she went to superior to live with her her um one of her brothers older brothers and uh, went to high one year of high school but yeah that was it oh izzy says that was it huh um it's over <laughs> <laughs> well esther sounds like a like you said a strong woman yep. and uh hopefully you get to read this that she wrote because it's really cool yeah. and i think that's that's the end of this video oh thank you <laughs> thank you all right bye bye <laughs> <laughs>